everybody, I'm Carol, this is my channel So Carol, and it is hashtag Friday Sews. Thank you for joining me today and of course we all know that Friday Sews was started by Jen from Today in Jen's Sewing Room who I thank every week and I will do forevermore because she has changed the life of so many people and you can all just type hashtag Friday Sews into the YouTube search bar and up we all pop one by one. You can filter it um, to get the latest um, but it's great. Everybody in one place, easy to find on YouTube. For a change, I thought I'd bring you my Friday sews from a corner of my sewing room. And this is what I have to cope with, this angled roof, which I don't know how many times I bash my head on this. So this is the corner where all the business happens um, and the rest of the room I don't even show you. But yeah, I thought I'd film it in my little business area this week. Now, I've had a busy week, as always. Um, had lots of fun with my embroidery machine and made a couple of things, but what I first want to tell you about is a bag I made. Now, the lovely Adam from Adam Sews is releasing a new bag pattern, and he was really kind to send us um, the pattern in advance. And it's the hipster bag pattern. It's like a bum bag as we call it in the UK, um, fanny pack as you call it in America, or you could just wear it, it seems to be trendy just to wear them like as a crossbody bag. So I had a go at making it, I'm not a bag maker, you know that, um, but definitely give it a go. And this is what we have. Fabric on the outside is nice, but the fabric inside is, is not very nice because I just made it a scrap to see if I could actually do it. Um, I did lots of new things that I'd never done before, had a bit of trauma with the webbing because it was really cheap webbing and it just frayed like you wouldn't believe. Um, all in all, I am very pleased with it. It's got the zip front pocket. Uh, the inside is quilted. It's got some binding and I'm gonna show you very quickly because the binding is dreadful. Um, but no, so that, I'm, I'm gonna stand up and show you. That is the size of it. A brilliant dog walking summer type bag or you're walking around. I want to make another one, but I'm gonna get the correct tool to do help me do the binding because that was not my favorite part. Definitely give it a try. Um, I'll put the link down below to, to Adam's uh, YouTube channel and website. And uh, yeah, very pleased with that. The two things I made, I will show you in the link right now. The first top I made this week is something that wasn't in the plans at all. But I was searching through all my fabric and I came across this double brush poly that I bought from Joanne's last autumn. And this pattern here, Butterick 6859, I just absolutely love because it's got those ruched, um, ruching bits at the shoulders. So I thought it's quite a quick make, so let's get that fabric made up. So this is what I have. I am really pleased with it. It's super soft. It's got a uh, waistband there. It's got cuff bands. It's got the ruching on the shoulder seams, which I know you can't see. It's better in a plain, and I've done it in a plain fabric before, but it does, it just makes for a nice little effect. It's got the normal jersey neckband. Came out slightly tight, but because of all the flowers of the busyness, you can't quite see it. But i um, really happy with this. It's a kind of a transitional piece. And because it's that double brush poly, it's just lovely. It does have the seam down the sleeve, this pattern, and I have sort of moaned about it before, but actually easily get away with it, with this fabric. So that was the first make I made that was not in the plans. The second make I did this week was New Look 6479 out of one of the crinkle rayon pieces I bought from Joanne's. So I did view A with the huge voluminous sleeves and yes, they were too big. So they had to have a bit of alteration. Uh, I actually came across a stock photo of just how big these sleeves are. So here we have it. Um, I'm sorry, I couldn't find a green pair of trousers. Um, so I put on um, the ones I made for 
uh, let alone last year, and I've worn loads. Um, so here we go, I took one inch off the sleeves to start with, it was just still too long. I then took another inch off and probably gone a bit too short now, but that's fine. They're comfy, they're not gonna bother me. They were also very baggy here, so I took some of the width out there. I took uh, about two inches off the length, because uh, I'm short, it's, it's gonna be too long. Um, I think that's all the changes I made from it. It's got an elasticated cuff. I put in some very soft elastic uh, I had, because I hate it tight around my wrist. Um, I bet where it's sort of, you know, the old French tuck nonsense. Um, there, that'd be quite nice. Uh, very pleased with it, tie neck. Um, you can have it untied, however you fancy. It's a beautiful soft fabric. I'm very pleased with it. Um, it was slightly temperamental as I had been warned, but I, instead of using pins, because my pins tend to fall out if it's a very lightweight fabric, I used the clips. And I found I'm using those more and more actually, just to keep everything together. Um, yeah, I'm very pleased with it. Maybe I did slightly too, deeper hem, but um, that's okay, it'll, it'll hang. So that was the second make this week. Yeah, so as you can see, I'm wearing uh, one of my makes this week and oh, I just love it. Anything double brush poly, it's just lovely and I've worn this all day and it's so comfortable, I'm really pleased. Now, I want to give you a dress update. So the basis for the dress was a new look 6619 um, it's got a yoke and a bottom band and I've made this before in a striped fabric with the stripes going one way then the other way then that way. So I thought I'd try and colour block it, which is what I intended to do. So I put the grey in the middle. A lot of you didn't like the grey. I have tried, um, sorry, the blue at the bottom. I have tried grey at the bottom and it just even worse. So what I've done is I've gone mad with a cover stitch machine. Um, I cover stitched it there. That kind of broke up the difference between the blue and the grey a bit. And then I went mad cover stitching on the bottom as well, just like twin needle. I only used two needles. It's got threads because I haven't finished it yet. So that's what I've decided to do. And I've got to finish off the binding and, and I'm going to do exactly what everybody said. Wear it and if I really don't like it then chop it off, make it a top and it'll be just fine. So. I think the score was something like in excess of 20 for keeping the dress and five's kind of really against it. So that's what I'm gonna do. Now, as you all know, I've got a new granddaughter coming in late summer, probably August, but I want to make a quilt. Now I don't quilt. I have made one quilt in my life. And that was a kit I got from Hobbycraft. But I just happened to be, you know how you on YouTube and these things pop up sometimes? Well, very often I watch a uh, channel so very easy. I think that's right, I'll put the link below anyway. I'm sure all of you watch her. She's brilliant, she does amazing things. Huge channel, loads of things. And she's primarily quilting. But she came up with this jigsaw quilt, an easy way to do a jigsaw puzzle quilt. I've never seen anything like it. I just fell in love with it. And even though I'm not a quilter, I really want to give it a go. So what I did, she gives you all the instructions on um, this YouTube, on this video, and what I did was just have a go. So I cut out some scrap fabrics. Yes, they don't go together. I know, I was literally doing some scrap fabrics. And it's kind of an easy way of doing a jigsaw piece, and it does look like a jigsaw puzzle. So I think for a nursery quilt, it's gonna be perfect. For the other grandchildren, I crocheted blankets for them. I'm not doing that this time. I've, this, it takes too long. But so I'll put, as I say, I'll put the details down below of it. Um, but yeah, I just had a go at um, just putting some fabrics together. So I have a pile of fabrics here that I'm going to use. Now I have to avoid flowers. Um, so I have to make sure nothing flowery on there, but I managed to get a bit of Disney in there and some uh, got 101 Dalmatians and moons and Dalmatians and clouds. I've tried to, I'm going to lay it out so it's very dark light, dark light. Um, so you can see the contrast of the jigsaw puzzle pieces. But 
I'm, I'm quite excited to have a go at this. Um, it's going to be a lot of cutting um, and then you have to cut out the jigsaw pieces as well to sew on. But yeah, this is going to be my ongoing project now for the next month or so, getting all these cut and hopefully the puzzle quilt being made. Now you may have seen this week that I have bought an embroidery machine. It's a kind of combo machine actually, it's the Brother 380D. It's called the D because it's got some Disney fonts on there. Um, it seems to be quite a good general sewing machine as well. So what I'm going to do for the time being is resign this one to the shed at the bottom of the garden and replace it and, and really get to know this new embroidery machine as a general machine and embroidery. So yeah, I put a video out this week. I'll put a link um, to it if anybody's interested. I've had some failures and I've had some successes. The first, I showed this in the video, but the first couple of things, uh, I just had a go, just doing an initial with two colors that work quite well. And I did a C and a heart, combined two designs, so that was fine. Then I ran into trouble. Now I have been sort of told that it's to do with the upper thread tension. Now whether I'm not threading it properly or I'm getting caught out on something is because I started to do this and the machine all jammed up and I ended up with that underneath. Hideous. And that took a long time to get out of the machine. Now that's happened to me um, three or four times where I've had to, I, I think I've threaded it right, but I've had to literally take apart, it's jammed, cut all the threads out. So I've got to be careful there. That's why I kind of want to bring it up, start using it and make sure that A, it's okay, or B, it's just me not threading it properly. That I've really got to get to grips with, but I am really pleased with it. Um, I've just got to learn. I'm just, it's just a learning curve. So I've got all the bits now, so I'm going to have a go at that um, in the next week. Talking about the weekend, there is a sewing shop that I go to every now and again in Bournemouth. Well, it's kind of Christchurch in Dorset. It's called My Sewing Box and it is having an open day this weekend. They open every few months or so. But if you are interested, I'll put the link below. They do have a few spaces, but you do have to book on. They do morning sessions and afternoon sessions. Um, um, they, I know that when this video goes out, I can't guarantee they've got any spaces but they certainly did um, when I was filming it. So if you're interested in that um, have a look at them but I hope to pick up some some fabric and also some wadding for the quilt. That's the main reason I'm going there not because I need any more fabric of course. So what did we do last weekend? We had the boys to stay overnight which went very well and we went to our local theme park, Paulton's Park um, in Hampshire. So we had a great day. We, um, the sun was out. Do you remember I said the weather forecast was bad? Well, the sun did come out for us. So we could take a picnic, we did some rides. Didn't take many photos, but those that I did take, I'll put at the end. What I should have done is shown you more about the park rather than just us on the rides. But uh, no, we, had, we did have a good time. And this weekend is a lot quieter because my daughter and her family are going away for the week. Um, so no childcare next week, so lots more time for sewing. Thank you for joining me. That's the end of my hashtag Friday Sews for this week. I look forward to seeing you next week. Don't forget to check out all the other people and see what they've been up to. And um, check down below in the box for any of the links that I've mentioned about. If you like this video, why not give it a thumbs up and I look forward to seeing you next week. Thanks for watching. Bye.